proudly we hail. city where the American stage begins, here is another program of the cast of Outstanding Players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. The story is entitled, The Vanishing Peacock. It involves two men of Mars, M-A-R-S. That stands for Military Affiliated Radio System. For the men who operate these stations, there is hardly a place in the world not within their grasp. In this story, a friendship formed by a couple of these radio hams leads to intrigue and danger. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, but first, in the world of music, the melody plus a good arrangement and a good performer most often determines a song's success. And the drama? Well, there the play's a thing, plus, of course, good actors to deliver the lines. And in whatever occupation you choose, training and teamwork are the reasons for success. If you're a young man of service age, you can be trained for success in the course of your choice by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. There are over 100 courses to choose from in such fields as radar, guided missiles, automotive maintenance, and the medical services. But, well, by golly, these are only a few. And if you act now, you can make your application and rest assured that you have a class space set aside in your name. If you're a high school graduate, we suggest you investigate this outstanding opportunity right away. So for complete information, I tell you what you do, fellas. You visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. And now we present Act One of the proudly we hail production, The Vanishing Peacock. I'm Sergeant Bill Crane. Mars, you know, is strictly a spare time operation. We run our own equipment and we do it entirely on our own time. Jimmy Yanamura was a regular member of our crew in Sendai when I was still back in the States. Jimmy had wormed his way onto the staff by coming up with a couple of pretty brilliant ideas which improved our transmission and reception and cost us practically nothing. After that, he was in. One night, a few months after I had been in the Far East, I was in the mess hall finishing supper when I heard the loudspeaker asking me to report to the guard at the main gate. When I got out there, to my surprise, I found Jimmy waiting for him. Jimmy! Hey, what's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. Sorry to disturb, bill -san. It's okay. What's up? You are a friend, bill -san. Well, of course. We both know that. Have bad news at home. Need advice. Well, I hope I can help. bill -san, can you leave? Sure. It's a long story. We go someplace we can talk. Fine. Now, tell me what this is all about, Jimmy. You know Honorable Father bill -san? Oh, sure. Met him at our house several times. Something terrible happened to Father. Last night, he is working late at factory. The silver factory? Right. You know, he used to belong to my family. Few years ago, Father forced to sell. However, he worked there still, manager. Sometimes does very intricate work. Father, best silversmith in Sendai. Maybe all of Japan. Yeah, well, he was working late. Robbers come. Hit father and knock him out. Make off with large amount of silver. All in bars. Oh, gee, that is terrible. No, wait. Story is not yet finished. Father still in hospital. Has not regained consciousness. Doctors say concussion. Maybe all right. Maybe not. Gee, I'm sorry, Jim. Maybe better honorable father not recover. Why? What do you mean? Police have guard in father's room. As soon as father recover... We'll arrest him as accomplice in crime. Well, why? What evidence do they have? When father sell factory to Mr. Muller, he had clause in contract that if so desired, 
could buy factory back at certain agreed figure. Yeah. Father saved money for five years now. I saved two, but still have not enough for transaction. Well, but... Clause expire this month. Family discuss. Very sorry, but nothing to do. Well, sure. What's the difference? After all, he, he's got his job there. Just so. However, today, when police interview Mr. Muller, present owner, he tell them he has told father that as soon as clause expires, father must start looking for other job. But why? I do not know. However, would mean much to honorable father. No other silver factories in Sendai would be forced to leave town in which honorable ancestors lived for centuries. You know what sure, this means. Sure, sure, sure. That still doesn't prove anything. Muller tell police that when he say this to father, honorable parent get very angry. Father say he will exercise option if he have to go out and steal money. Well, even if he said that, it was just an expression. Muller tell police father more serious in expression. Who heard all this, Jimmy? No one, except Muller. So it's his word against your dad's. But one more thing. Also missing is silver peacock. A silver peacock? Yes. None of other pieces taken, thousands of dollars worth, but only a silver peacock. You see, when father sell to Muller, they have agreement over Bird. What about? Bird was made by honorable great-great-grandfather, was placed at entry. Family thought Bird signified good luck. When deal made, Muller insist Bird his. Father say his personal property, but papers all signed. Bird stay at factory. And that was the only other thing taken? Only thing. Oh, boy, somebody was sure trying to make it look like your dad was in on it, all right. Bill, son, you do not think him guilty? Of course not. Now all we have to do is prove it. Thank you, Bill, son. I never forget these words. Think he's home? Better try again. Doesn't he have any help? One man. He also driver. Bilsan. His mother now. Mother Sam. Well, uh, you know Muri, sir. Would like word with you if possible. This is friend, Sergeant Crane. Good evening, Sergeant. Won't you come in? Thank you, sir. Sit down. Thank you, Molasan. May I offer you some tea? Uh, thanks, sir, but we've just had some. We came about Jimmy's father. I suppose as much. He is recovering, I trust. The doctor doesn't know yet. And even if he does, if he continues to be suspected of this... this crime, if honorable father is arrested... I see, I understand. It would be most regrettable. We came to ask you about what you told the police about the argument with Mr. Yanomura. I see. Well, of course. I was forced to tell them the truth. They asked if I knew anyone who might have a motive other than, of course, just the theft of silver. Then it is true that you had words, that you told my father he must leave the factory? Yes, it was. Of course, I was sorry to have to involve Yanomura, but... Well, why were you letting him go? Well, to tell the complete truth... I'm sorry to be forced to say this before his son, but Yonomura had been making something of a nuisance of himself. First, it was the dispute over the peacock. That kept coming up again and again. Then, well, I suppose he was simply getting senile. But he made decisions I considered bad, and without consulting me, it was as though he, not I, was the owner. Frankly, I was quite relieved when I knew the contract was due to expire and I could... Let him go. You would have discharged him? I fully intended to see to it that he had an adequate income for his needs, but he became so incensed that I decided to drop the subject for the moment. Then, I suppose... You suppose he stole the silver? Knocked himself on the head to make it look like he was robbed and is going to show up with the money to buy back the firm next month? Something of the sort. That wouldn't be very smart, would it? I mean, when he showed up with all that money, the police would certainly begin asking him some questions. I suppose he didn't think of that. Well, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm afraid that is what happened. And now, since 
There's nothing more I can tell you. Yeah. We were just leaving. Calling W6X83, Mesa, Colorado. W6X83, Mesa, Colorado. Can you read me? Over. This is W683, Mesa, Colorado. Come in, Sendai. I read you fine. Oh, hi, Jim. You're rally. Choto yes, Mata, just a second. Got a message here for the station. A message for Mrs. Ethel Brackett. Repeat, Brackett. Baker, Roger, Abel, Charlie, King, Easy, Tango, Tango. 113 West Court Street. Happy birthday, darling. We will celebrate. Next one, together, signed, Dick, Dog Ida Charlie King. Over. W683, Mesa, Colorado. Message received. Thank you, Sendai. Will deliver by telephone immediately. Over and out. Oh, what's in the package, Jimmy? Wait. Wait till I show you. How's your father? Condition on change. Look. Holy jumping catfish, is this the... The silver peacock. The very one that was taken from the factory. Well, that's beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. He's very old. Such workmanship cannot be duplicated today. Well, you took me seriously when I said the way to clear your dad was to find the stuff. Well, not exactly. You have been doing some detective work since yesterday. I must confess it was only accidental discovery. Well, okay, but tell me where. This discovery makes Honorable Parent's position even more serious, Bill San. That is the trouble. Now, what do you mean? At the hospital this afternoon, they asked me to bring some things for Father in case he wakens from long sleep. Personal articles. Later at home, while seeking for a certain kimono I know is particular favorite, I feel something in back of shelf. I bring it out. It is the silver peacock wrapped in kimono. Holy smoke. It was a great shock. I should think so. Now, what are you going to do with it? Not know yet. Oh, it's too big to hide just anywhere. I think maybe we wrap again in paper and mail to police. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Bill San, I have not yet finished story. Oh, there's more? Yes. Proves peacock taken as, how you say, frame. I wrap peacock up as soon as possible. I leave house and not leave a moment too soon. Just as I turn corner on motorbike, I look back and see police car. It is Inspector Suruki. He is in charge of case. Car stops at door. And so you hightailed it over here? Yes. Proving that the peacock was planted, and then whoever planted it tipped off the police, and they were coming to look for it. Yes, Bill San. It certainly looks that way. <laughs> You are listening to the proud Louis Hale production of The Vanishing Peacock, and we will return to our second act in just one moment. But first, you ask most anyone what they want out of life, and a great majority of the answers can be boiled down to just one word. And that one word is happiness. Well, now, happiness is a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but basically, I guess you might say that it's the achievement of your goals. To be happy is to be successful in whatever you do. And in today's highly specialized world... Training is the key to success. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. Under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice and be trained in such interesting fields as X-ray operation, photography, automotive maintenance, and communications. In all, there are over 100 courses to choose from. So for complete information on how you can benefit from this program, you visit your local United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Vanishing Peacock. Moeller must have done it. Moeller? But why? I don't know yet, Jimmy, but he's the only one who could have done it. Why? How many other people knew about the trouble over the peacock? Only a few, I suppose. Perhaps some of the old employees. But all very reliable. 
work for my family for generations. Well, you see, Mola's the only one who'd do it. If it was just an ordinary robbery, the thieves would have kept it. They wouldn't be bothered to plant stuff to throw suspicion on someone, and they'd be hundreds of miles away from here by now. True. Look, suppose your father found out something about Mola. What would he do? Found out what? Oh, I, I don't know, that he, that he had a skeleton in his closet or something. Skeleton? I mean that he'd done something or was hiding something about his past. Well, father would try to determine if what he had found out was true. Father is a very fair man. I thought so. And what would be the best way to find out? Well, I, I suppose he would ask mother. Father is unlike many of my countrymen. Very direct man. That's what I thought. So, Mola denies it. But your dad lets the facts speak for themselves, and Mola is forced to admit it. Yes. What next? He'd tell Mola he was very sorry, but he would have to tell the police about this. Possible. Sure, it's possible. That's what happened, Jimmy. So to protect himself, Mola decides to frame your father. He probably didn't do it himself personally. He got somebody to do the job. But his hired man was careless. He didn't finish it off. So now... In order to prepare against the time your father regains consciousness... Mola makes it all up about the argument. Plants the peacock in my father's effects. And now, even when my father recovers, his word will be suspect. Right. Go to the head of the class. But, Bill San, what is this thing father has found out? I don't know. But what difference does it make if we can find the stuff where Mola hid it? That's all we need to prove there was something. I'd sure like to take a look around his house. Uh, he would not be so foolish as to leave evidence in so very obvious place. Bill San, I think I know where might put loot. You do? Where? At Summer Cottage, which once belonged to my family, now belongs to Mola. Where is it? Is it far? It's on island. Can get to nearest village by train. Maybe charter fishing boat for a trip to cottage. Tomorrow's my day off. Let's try it. What a day. I wouldn't have missed this for anything. Even if we don't prove a thing, it's worth it. Not bad. Milsan, look. Over there. At the place we're going, Itsujima? Yes. A small settlement in summertime. All closed down now. Uh, nice and quiet. Off season, no one comes here. That is why I thought Mola might hide stuff at this place. Not one to put where maybe someone else can find it. Why, look at the way the waves splash up on those cliffs on the mainland over there. Between island and shore are swift, dangerous current. Even in boat, it's dangerous to venture in straits. Yeah, your motor dies and bang up against those rocks. Don't worry. We will avoid it. You said it. Well, uh, here we are. Uh, uh, tie securely, Bill San. Black clouds foretell strong seas. Okay. Yeah, all secure. What are we waiting for? Well, that's that. If there's any silver in this house, I'll eat it. And not so fast, Bill San. Is one more place. Where? We've been through every closet and drawer and cupboard in the whole place. Watch. Hey, a secret panel. How'd you do that? Opens when I touch concealed spring. Come, we go down. Right. Oh, it's dark enough in here. I bring flashlight. See? Oh, that's better. It's a big room. Look, Bill San. Yeah. What do you want to bet is in those boxes? There's no need to wager. Bill San, look. Markings on outside indicate contents. This must be... Shh. Bill San. I hear something. Someone's coming. Mola. Better get out of here quick. No time for that. Bill San, I close panel. Be sure to look down here. Yes. Well, no prisons. Won't give us away. No other way out of this room? No. I have a gun, as you will presently see, and it will be a pleasure to use it. Okay, Mola, we get it. Come up the stairs slowly with your hands above your heads. Well, you were quite clever, Yonomura. Almost as clever as your father, but not quite clever enough. Humble thanks, Mula-san. Yeah. 
What are you going to do now, though? I believe that an unfortunate boating accident is about to occur. And how are you going to arrange that? Very simple. You will precede me to the dock. You will see. Turn off your engine, please. In the middle of the straight here? Of course. Okay, and then what? Now your spark plugs. You will please remove them. Our spark plugs? You can't get away with this. And why not? The wreck. When it's found with the spark plugs missing, there'll be plenty of questions for you to answer. May I point out to you that the cliffs drop straight off into deep water? I greatly doubt if there will be any attempt made to salvage your craft. After it has been shattered there. I see. He's right, Bill San. I told you how treacherous this street was. And now, Sergeant, these spark plugs, if you please. Looks like you hold all the cards. I'll need a wrench. Very well, but do not attempt anything. I would dislike having to shoot, but if necessary, I will do so. Yonomura, hand him the wrench. Bill San? Just one thing, Mola. Yes? As long as we're dead ducks anyhow, I'd like to have you tell me if what I've figured about this whole deal is right. And what have you figured, Sergeant? All that silver was stolen, wasn't it? What the clever premise. Yeah, we're real smart. It was, wasn't it? Perhaps. You've been making all your stuff out of stolen silver. And if this is true? That's why you bought that factory from Jimmy's father in the first place, huh? Your offense. Your semantics disturbs me. Let us say I have certain contacts who have found it to their best interest to sell me my raw material at an exceptionally attractive price. Yeah, a fence. And Mr. Yonamura found out about it and was going to the police. A brilliant deduction. The spark plugs, please. All right, all right. Keep your shirt on. Here. And now I will bid you adieu. Ah, that's that. Indeed. Nice guy. Can't say I'm sorry to see him go. Bill San, quick. We have one chance left. What's that? In Locker House. There are oars. Oars? Yes. If we can keep craft headed into approaching storm, there is certain place where current runs out from cliffs instead of in. Few people know of it. Quick! Sort of hopeless, Jimmy. Not say that, Bill San. Well, there's a storm. It's going to be a big help. Wonder what time it is. Since it's dark now, you can't tell. It's about eight, I would estimate. Watch she stopped. All wait. Wait. Wait a minute. Stop rowing. I hear something. Where? Over there, toward the island. I hear a motor. A motorboat. No, Bill, son. I fear you're too optimistic. No, no, no. Listen, listen. Me too. No use. No use. The wind just carries the voices away. You gotta make them see us. Wait. Get the flashlight. It's the best chance we have. That's it. Wave it around. Try flashing an SOS. It's so is. They're not turning, they're going by us. The wind! Wind they've slowed! We'll send they're turning! They have seen us! Give me well not for this! You're no more time like this, he wants to know who we are. Ask him who he is. He must be coastal patrol boat. Now watch it, he's going to throw a line. Got it! Arugato! Go time out! Don't touch him, I'll We'll be delivered promptly. Thank you, Sendai. Over and out. Jimmy, am I glad to see you. We've got a stack of messages here that would choke a horse. 
Hey, have you seen your dad? Just come from hospital. Honorable father able to confirm everything. Mola in jail right now. Bill San, you know how patrol boat happened to be in straight. I not only don't know, but I couldn't care less. <laughs> I just know it was there. Anyhow, I tell you, Inspector Suruki, I talked to him at hospital. He say he very sorry. Oh, I should think he would be suspecting your father. He didn't. He didn't? Then we went through all that for... For nothing. Saruki so say police never think father have anything to do with crime. Small town, they all know father honorable man. They suspect Mola, but, but... But cannot prove it. Under surveillance, they keep him and hope that he lead them to loot. Mola duck away from officer who watch him. Well, I guess I can finish it. And by the time they could pick up his trail again and get a boat going, well... They just made it in time. Yes. Had to go first to island. It was quite long before Mola admit where he leave us. Only do so when he decide he get into worse trouble if we die. Ah. Well, we had a close shave. You know, Jimmy does just one thing that puzzles me. Yes? We were sure pushing those oars. Yes. It's funny, we never did get into that current you were telling me about. Bill San, I have confession to make. About what? No safe current. Only say same to make you row harder. Well, I'll be... Talk about oriental and tree. I've always found it to be true that a man with a good eye to the future makes a good soldier. And that's why so many bright young men and women are joining the United States Army now. For Army life is an exciting career and there's plenty of room up at the top. Today, American soldiers get the finest technical training in the world. Every man is a specialist, a master at his job. And the Army sees to it that every man is trained to do his job and what's more important, to do it right. Because the Army is growing so rapidly, Today's soldiers are being promoted fast. Oh, you work hard, sure, but, well, believe me, the rewards are really well worth it. Right now, the Army needs healthy, intelligent men and women, volunteers from 18 to 34. So if you've got what it takes, then you think seriously about an Army career. Stop in at your nearest United States Army recruiting station today. Get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, and inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>